Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with another off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Wednesday, May the 9th, 2018. Why am I back before the week is done? Well, we have this, a red X here in the eastern Pacific. And while it is not a concern to land, it's worth mentioning. And it's trying to develop up to 70% chance. Um, I don't know if this is going to make it to tropical depression or tropical storm intensity. We'll look at the um, satellite sort of map overlay here. And uh, this is from earlier, I guess, unless they've updated it. Nope, they just updated it a little bit ago. How about that? Live, right? That's pretty cool. It literally updated right now. Down to 50%. You saw it as it happened. So there you go. My <laughs> my um, opinion or my, uh, what do you call it, my insight was spot on that I didn't think this would do much more. So let's just read this. I'll shut up and read this. After a period of increased organization during the past 24 hours, the shower activity associated with the broad area of low pressure located you know, more than 1,100 miles southwest uh, of the southern tip of the Baja uh, has markedly decreased. It appears that the disturbance is already reaching an unfavorable environment and the chances of tropical cyclone formation are diminishing. However, it could still become a tropical depression etc. So here's what it looks like on the visible satellite and you can clearly see here that let's get the drawing tool in let's get a different color I forgot that I was showing a black and white so there it is right there definitive rotation no question about it but it lacks organized deep convection and as such it's not a tropical depression or a tropical storm the sea surface temperatures in this area and the, the disturbance by the way it's also Worthy to note that it's labeled 90E. Remember those invest numbers? And if you're new to this, what am I talking about? When the National Hurricane Center has an area of interest, such as this, they don't just call it, you know, a blob of clouds or an area of low pressure. I mean, that's how it's described to the public in these uh, statements. But internally, they have these areas of investigation and they label them with a numbering system, 90 through 99, and then they start over again and the letter E for Eastern Pacific. And in the Atlantic, they are the same thing, 90 through 99, and they get the letter L. <clears throat> so uh, in the Atlantic, it would be, you know, invest area 90L or whatever. So just thought I'd throw that in there, that this is invest area 90, 90E uh, in the Eastern Pacific. The first one, so the next one will be 91 through 99, and then they start over again. And you can clearly see even on this visible satellite animation, much more stable air here, indicated by the low clouds, the convective activity very weak. And going back to the satellite or the sea surface temperature chart, the system 90E is located about right in here. Nope, sorry, I goofed. Come on, Mark, right up here in this vicinity, roughly. And sea surface temperatures there are fairly warm 26 27 celsius so 81 80 degrees something like that fahrenheit but it's the overall air mass in and around this area that is more stable because colder sea surface temperatures certainly reside up here to the north and the pacific is quite cold in that area and as such i mean it's only may it's may 9th it's not july or august where the peak time of the season out here in the East Pack is well on its way. So an interesting feature. It had it shot, probably not going to do much, but it shows us that the hurricane season for the Pacific Basin here, the Eastern Pacific part anyway, is nearing. It uh, officially begins on May the 15th, and then the Atlantic season begins on June 1st. Now, that being said, I want to talk about this because I'm seeing a lot of chatter uh, across the Internet, and people are asking me questions about it. The Twitter, hurricane, social media world, whatever, is a buzz because the modeling, mainly the GFS deterministic model, is indicating the development of a tropical cyclone way out in the long range, beyond 8, 9, 10 days. And anybody who can access that via the publicly available sites can see how it runs through those 384 hours, which is two weeks and what happens all right so you, you sort of see the end 
it's kind of like seeing the end of the movie before the movie's finished, okay? And there's a good analogy right there. So, you know, you 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 see the end of the movie or you get a, a, an advanced look at the script, you know, and you're not supposed to or whatever, and you say, oh, that's how the movie ends, and then they change things, all right? So maybe it's not a good analogy, but I love movies, so that's what I'll go with. It's way out in time, and while I think a good part of what Dr. Ventress is saying up here about the false alarm aspects of the GFS are true, I would not have said definitively not going to happen. And that's just my opinion. It's okay for him to have his. I wouldn't have said not going to happen. Why? I'll show you why. Now, interestingly enough, you have this from Dr. Ventress, and then you have this from Weatherbell. And Weatherbell uh, saying how models are picking up that the MJO, which is the Madden-Julian oscillation, will be moving into phases one and two, which corresponds to favorable tropical development. We could soon see tropics becoming active. I think this is a true enough statement. There's nothing in here that raises alarm bells or any kind of hype or sensationalism because these are generally true statements, okay? So we can go and we can see. Here is the INSEP or the GFS and the ensemble-based prediction system for the Madden-Julian oscillation. This is where we are now. It's in phase eight, moving the forecast, moving through phases one and two, and history shows us that this favors Western Hemisphere tropical cyclone development. It, it, it creates upward motion, uh, favorable 200 millibar winds, so forth and so on. And so you say, well, it's the GFS. The GFS stinks. Some people say that. Um, sometimes I feel like it's competing sports teams, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, and so we say, well, let's com what does the Euro say? That's what everybody says, right? Well, look at this. The Euro is almost the same thing. Remember in years past, if you've watched my videos enough, the, how these two different plots will be vastly different? Well, that's the ECMWF right there. There it is. And you compare that to the GFS, the INSEP uh, model, and its ensemble prediction, right? And they're very similar. Let's get the pointer back. That's not bad. That's not too far off. So the European also indicating that this will move through phases one and two, which is favorable for Western Hemisphere tropical cyclone development. Dr. Phil Klotzbach and his research, Joe Bastardi and others, this is a known fact. It's not some theory or whatever, okay? We see, well, when tropical cyclones form, where was the MJO typically? Uh, and, you know, we see it usually in phases uh, one and two, uh, coming out of eight, all right? And, I mean, you can even see here, Western Hemisphere and Africa. So that's evidence to support that uh, maybe something will happen. And we can look at it at a, in a map and sort of graphical representation here. So this is our analysis, okay? This is five days out, and this is all sinking motion. The green is generally rising motion or favorable. Just think of it as green generally means go, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will go, all right? Just because the light turns green doesn't mean somebody always goes forward, right? Sometimes they sputter and they don't go. But green generally means go. And so here's the five-day forecast. Here's 10 days out. Oh, look at that right there in the Western Caribbean. Very, very favorable according to the GFS. And then it stays that way through day 15. In fact, it spreads throughout a good deal of the Atlantic Basin and the Southeast Pacific. So we have that sort of leading, uh, lending credence to this idea. The climate forecast system, very similar uh, this is your analysis. This is day five, day ten. You know, not unfavorable. It's kind of neutral. But then by day 15, the climate forecast system showing green, and it hangs around through day 20, believe it or not. And that's pretty far out in time. I give it that. But all of this starts to add up, right? We're following the evidence. So instead of just saying, and I'm very careful here not being critical of what he said, I just wouldn't say not going to happen because there is evidence to support that it might happen. That's all I'm saying. And I like this because it's fairly benign, just giving people a heads up. And it's posting you know, these maps that show these trends over time that could be coming. And then you have me to kind of explain it further here. All right, so there it is, the CFS. And now let's just go look at the model itself, the GFS. This is the 850 millibar level. This is a week out from right now. And so this shows us vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. 
Look at that. Speaking of spin in the atmosphere, beautiful Bermuda High. There's Bermuda. Yeah, I love this. And so your 5,000 foot winds, low level flow coming out of the southeast, muggy, summertime conditions. You know, that's a large scale weather feature right there. You would hope the GFS would get that right, okay? So this is 168 hours out. This is just some other feature. Don't worry about that. Focus down here, though, right down here. This is where it gets interesting. So a week out, look at the flow of the wind barbs here. They're counterclockwise, kind of this large gyre that we get, this Central American gyre. This is a week out in time. And what do we have at a week out in time on the MJO forecast? Well, here's day five and day 10. So it's kind of a blend of these two. It's getting favorable, all right? So at least that matches up to what the upper forecast shows, the 200 millibar level. Uh, in other words, this is not just some error in the model necessarily. I'm not saying it's going to be exactly right, but I'm saying this might be a time where it is correct. And so we can't just dismiss it as not going to happen because there's evidence to say that it might this time. So let's just move the frames through to show you how this plays out. And you'll see. So this is a week out. All right, so that's day seven. Let's go out here to day eight, 192 hours. And you still see this little feature down here, kind of curled up around Central America. Uh, again, very strong Bermuda high. Whew, love that. Man, I'm telling you. Uh, southerly winds, hot, humid conditions, etc. Uh, anyway, back to the matter at hand. You know, you see these westerly winds coming in here, sort of this monsoon trough curled up over Central America. Now, I will say this. It could easily start to congeal over here. It could just sit over Central America, or it might not be here at all. Those are scenarios. But we see the favorability coming in in the upper levels. Maybe we should pay attention to it. So that's day eight. We go out here to day nine or so. And there it starts to consolidate just off the coast of Central America. And from there, we just wait and see what happens. This is out to day 10, roughly. The European and the GFS are not absolutely abysmal out to day 10, okay? They're not going to be dead on accurate. But you got to give some credit to these global models. And yes, the European and its ensembles are showing a lowering of pressures down here as well. So my point is, don't look at a deterministic run where somebody posts a singular picture. Here I am telling you what not to do. I hate doing that. But you know, they, somebody will post a picture where it shows a hurricane up here or somewhere over here. You've seen it all the time. And then get all worried about it. Try to understand and go dig for yourself and say, well, why would it show that? What's the reason? You know, it's not quite hurricane season yet, so that's kind of weird. Um, let me look further instead of panicking. And then you yourself sharing that image and more and more people get anxious and they don't understand what they're looking at because, you know, not everybody watches this video to have me explain it to them. And there are people that are going to explain it better than me. Uh, so that's part of it. You have to research yourself and see what's up. All right. So I will be on top of this. You can, you know, guarantee that. And we'll see. Not going to happen versus could see some tropical, you know, development. A blend of the two, I think, is a good way to look at it. We'll see what happens with this in the future and how it all evolves. Uh, as we get close to hurricane season, I want to let you know, and I'm going to do this more and more, I am on Patreon, a fantastic site for creators to get sponsored by those who are enjoying the creation. So head over to Patreon. The hurricane season's coming uh, let's get this number, you know, 10 times that high. What do you say? Uh, I invite you to come in and support. There's a lot of cool rewards. Or you could just become, you know, hey, thanks for the support. Any, every little bit helps. I appreciate it. Just wanted to point that out. It's my job, right? So, look, this is almost time for Hurricane Outlook and discussion, but the off-season part stays because we're still just a few days shy of it, East Pacific-wise. So tomorrow I'll do another update, probably much more brief than this. Since we have all the sort of background information here, I can be a lot more brief. And we'll see what these models are showing, and we'll watch this. I'm not just going to throw this out there. Hey, we might have some development, and then just leave it. Let's watch every day and see what happens. All right? We're going to know 
within 10 days, right? So what the heck? Let's see how this plays out. I think it could be very interesting, and along the way, we can all learn something about this together, and that's what it's all about. All right? You got any questions or comments or whatever, leave them in the comments section, and I'll try to respond. I like to do that, and we'll see what develops from this. Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Sutherth, HurricaneTrack.com. Be back with more tomorrow afternoon.